the following panel, we will be presenting the Index of Responsibility of the International Public Sector Global Trends and the state of the implementation of the accounting reforms of the public sector in the Pulsar countries. The moderator of this space will be the Under Deputy uh, Secretary of Public Finance of the Ministry of Treasury of Brazil, Enrique Di Velo do Nascimento. Uh, good afternoon to everybody. I am very, very happy for being here I'm from the Brazilian team. It's a great pleasure to participate here and be part of the forum here in Mexico after the pandemic. We are here and uh, we had a face-to-face -face event in Brazil in 2019. The forum was organized wonderful by uh, Magdalena. And uh, of course, uh, we the, in 2020, we had it online and we gave continuity to the forum. And well, uh, Juan has also been having a great manager we have been uh, in contact with him through video conferences, and we are now uh, seeing each other's faces physically present and in Mexico City. And I congratulate Juan and all his team for the excellent organization of the forum. Uh, we have had a wonderful experience here, sharing experiences. Uh, we. Uh, are face to face. And in this panel, we will uh, cover a very interesting aspects because it's a multicultural panel. And here we will talk about world aspects. On my side, uh, we will be listening to the speakers about the convergence of the accounting international standards. And we will listen to the presentation on this topic globally. And Dimitri, he is an expert. We know him. He is also Mexican. And uh, also, we uh, know the differences in Latin America. And uh, we will be having the World Bank, and, uh, and we will be listening at the central focus of Brazil. And also, he has worked also with Pulsar countries. And, and these two speakers, uh, we will listen to Dimitri, the technical director of the program of the accounting standards in the public public sector, and Dimitri is from Dave Savsby um, from 2020. He is including the work as uh, he has been part of the technical work, and he has been supporting the spread and commitment of all the interested stakeholders of Dave Savsby and its adoption and implementation by all the countries. Ross uh, went into IBSAPS in 2013, and he was focused on the development of the government guidelines and the establishment of the advising group of the committee of IPSASB. Ross also supervised many projects of IPSASB in relation to accounting and financial instruments and developed the working strategy of the committee for 2019 to 2019. 2023. Dimitri Forkinko nowadays is an expert, executive expert of the financial management of World Bank for Europe and Central Europe. And he collaborates with Latin America and Middle East. And also went in World Bank in 2007. And the main responsibilities are the technical projects and the strengthening of institutions in the 
public financial and accounting matters and government auditing. He has occupied different positions before going into the World Bank. And uh, here in Mexico, he is a public accountant manager. And he graduated uh, from, with honors from ITAM and also a, a master's degree from the school university and also he has published many articles in relation to government affairs so i will give the floor to dr rosa smith thank you very much Thank you very much uh, for having me here today. And I will be talking about the Index International uh, Sec. Uh, it's, uh, we will have the International Association, and we work with the Charter and Accounting Sector in the United Kingdom. We Ipsos be our partners, and we compile information uh, through IPAC and SIPCA, and we compile the information and uh, we co we co-generate contacts and SIFMA uh, and IFAC and so are some of the agencies that generate this report. The index was developed since 2018 and we generated a report of all the status of many things and we compiled many data from many jurisdictions and uh, we reported on based on the accrual and we work on the scrutiny. Uh, we saw what uh, all the economies were using or if they were complying with the norms and uh, directly or indirectly and we generated the report of the status quo of the things and we compiled data of whatever uh, generated in 2019 and we were for forecast of 2025 and we uh, compiled information on the three levels of states of the things and also the accrual was part of the study we we saw the operations based on the accrual of the capital, and we saw the behavior of financial statements, and we analyzed on the accrual in one entity, because that was given us a case study and the basis in which we studied the case. I don't have too much time, but in the data compilation, we overcome many challenges. Well, during the pandemic, and everybody went through many challenges. Uh, we needed to uh, face disruptive conditions to compile information that needed to be updated to generate our index. Uh, and by updating the uh, uh, index, IVAC and other agencies work uh, with a focal group and uh, regional stakeholders that help us to contact the Ministry of Treasury, of Public Credit, and other financial uh, entities that generated a consolidated and uh, that said and gave it to us. On the 2020, the index um, took us to the analysis of the methodology and what happened in the region. But in general, uh, we will listen to um, very concrete questions. We want to see the overall panorama and uh, what happens when we implement the information in order to see the accrual at a global level. Data are compiled in a certain way. We need to follow the data compilation protocol. We serve many economies and countries, and I know that many of you answer the survey jurisdiction by jurisdiction in order to for us to analysis. We value that very much, and your information will be scaled globally. In order to identify jurisdiction by jurisdiction, what is happening, the SIPSA United Kingdom team went to the compiled information and look in the verification of the information, uh, the proof that will take us to a standard or to the position of taking decisions for the documentation. We had the status of things and the financial status 
of many regions. And so it was not an audit, but it was a verification. And there is an office in United Kingdom that do those revisions when we do our index. They validate the information. If it is the website, they go if the information uh, is uh, collates with the index and the profiles uh, from the 2020 and 25 and 2030. There you can download all the accounts and all the information that was sent for this index. Uh, when we build that index, and according to the periods, we look the status of things for 2020. In that period, we needed to see the forecast uh, and see the trends in each jurisdiction and in the period of 2025 and in the future to see what we could achieve in 2030. Globally, we got the information, we updated it, and here you can see the graph. In 2020, we analyzed that 30% of the jurisdictions reported on accrual. And there, on orange, on the map, we see the partial information, the percentage of the principal, the cash, and the accrual. Uh, whatever is mapped and coded in, in red, we will see the cash flow in the future. I don't want to see in detail this map because other speakers will talk about what is happening in the focal region and what we have achieved in, in each region. I want to talk now about the global trends. As you can see on the graph, during 2020, we see the jurisdictions and the accrual. And if we go to 2025 and 2030, we see a gradual increase. And what is in green, we see the percentages of 30, 50, 73 percent jurisdiction by jurisdiction against the accrual and projected for 2030. And these are 145 jurisdictions that we analyze. It doesn't give uh, everything that happens in all the world, just this part of what uh, the regions reported. What we see in the graphs according to the global trends is the following. In this period, of time, as we saw in the graphic, we have quantified the jurisdiction based on the percentage. The IPSAS uh, data allow us to analyze the pie, and in 2025, the pie graphic show a very low percentage of the jurisdictions. And in 2020, 49 jurisdictions use the accrual. When we use the information in, for 2030, uh, the, uh, all the data allows us to go to that trend. We see the positive trends. So in the following slide, we see the trends in Latin America and in the member economies of focal that are part of our survey. For 2020, we see the focal member states. We see 47% of the jurisdiction are part of the percentage study. 47% of jurisdiction have a partial accrual. And in in these jurisdictions, we see they are uh, going uh, through a transition. It's an achievement in this analysis because there are no jurisdiction in the world when we analyze the trends that can show so much positive points when we analyze projections and trends. And now I will share some other presentations that allow us to make the analysis in other jurisdictions. It is not so positive, but it is good uh, because we can and talk about the progress. And I can truly say that this region is a, is a point. They are leaders and can be a reference benchmark and also a standard to follow. I know that you follow the IPSAS, and I thank everybody for abiding to the programs and to improve the programs in the accounting system. Uh, well, the, the forecast for 20. Uh, 20, 25, and 2030, we see the accrual on the trends. We see higher percentages as when the moment we hire them. And we can witness the growth. Uh, you, you see this whenever you uh, start with the data given by IPSAS. 
Okay, I will not dedicate too much time to this slide. I just want to point out that the segment in blue does not change, but what is changing in local context is the percentage of the pies. They show the trends and the forecast for these indexes for 2030. There is a positive trend, and IPSAS, we have been very happy because IPSAS has been implemented as it was said by the board, and we see just so, some adjustments. In Mexico or Latin America is at the top in adopting the model of IPSAS and by following the international board. And now I will talk about the next steps. In the following uh, in implementation of this initiatives, we are going to include other jurisdiction, and we are going to get more hard data to measure our index to use reliable data and implement IPSAS. In the following updating, we are forecasting that everything is materialized for 2023 20, and 2040, and we will be reporting on global analysis, and also we will compile the information regionally, and by the, uh, generating regional reports, we will be more significant, and we will be standardizing the region, and we will be adopting international standards by region, and we will be tackling the challenges. Let's go on working with international bodies and focal events in the future. We will have a session in 2023 and 24. So update according to the surveys, check the progress, and check according to the report of 2021 and the past and the future to see if you're implementing as we have predicted, so that in that transition, everything can be materialized as quickly as possible. For all those that responded to the survey, the, now the survey will not be modified, and not even the methodology to measure the compiled data. The survey is answered online. It's in Spanish, Portuguese, and English, and also in Russian. And in the future, we are thinking now in that future, and we will try to work in other jurisdictions and regions. Uh, we are not talking about the federal level of the jurisdictions, because we know that there are other things happening at the level of entity, province, and departments. And when we go into more detail while creating the indexes, we have to scale in other levels of government to understand what is happening in the public sector and in the different local and state governments. After sharing my information, I want to thank all of you for being attentive to my presentations. I will be waiting for your questions, and maybe you will ask me how to compile uh, data to constitute the index. So thank you very much for inviting me to this event. First of all, I want to thank Juan, to Joseph, for having invited me to this event. I want to congratulate Juan and all his team and the team of the Treasury, uh, the Secretariat of Treasury, for the organization of this event. I am very, very pleased to be here with you for two reasons. First, because I'm coming back to my country, and second, because I'm able to see face-to-face -face so many old friends and familiar faces of Focal. Uh, although up nowadays I'm working in another region of Europe and Middle Asia, uh, I'm still working in Pulsar that has to do a lot with Focal. I will explain it later on. I want to say that the region of Latin America, the Caribbean, and the focal friends are always near my heart. And so I'm very, very happy to be here today with you, mainly because it is the first face-to-face -face event of many of us since the pandemic started and that it has changed the world forever. In the following slide,
The main objective of my presentation, as you will see later on, is to share the implementation results and the government reform implementation in the Pulsar countries. And although many of you have participated in events that the Pulsar and Focal have jointly organized, uh, and maybe you are familiarized with some of the activities of the Pulsar program, I will detail some other points. And I will structure my presentation presentation uh, by is uh, starting with a, a recent publication about the Pulsar book and the implementation of reforms in the Pulsar countries. The concept and idea of this book were taken by Fotecal. Uh, do you remember some years ago the two uh, entities published their book? And the Focal book was specifically very, very interesting. And it was very well written. And so in Pulsar, we thought, let's do something similar. And methodologically, we use the methodology used by IPSA's board. And in the index that Ross presented, uh, you must have seen it. And you will see similar features. Uh, in the two books. I left some copies of the book at the registration desk. I think that most of them have been uh, taken, but there are still one or two. If you still uh, need one more book, please go ahead and take one copy. Pulsar, as you know, it's a regional program, finance, by the Secretariat of the, uh, the Interior for the Switzerland Economic Affairs, uh, known by many of us by SECO, and the Secretariat of Finance of Austria. The main objective of the program is to support the development of government accounting in the member states. And nowadays, the program has 13 countries. They are stated, although some of the countries have have more than one jurisdiction. The main objective of the presentation is to share with you the results and the main findings that we found in this work. The main findings. Well, now it is not a surprise for anybody. The implementation of governmental uh, accounting system based on accrual uh, represent many benefits. Uh, among them, the improvement of public services rendered, the insurance of a fiscal uh, stability and a national economic growth promotion, and also we can improve the acceptance and credibility of governments, and we can see transparency objectives, financial management, and accountability aspects. Each one of the countries reported a different set of opportunities and challenges. And uh, of course, so I will share them with you later on. It was also important to see that all the countries are going uh, towards the implementation of accounting information based on accrual and NICS SP, but diff at a different speed. In the implementation of NIC SP, the main axis of all the government accounting systems in the region were using both methods of implementation, the direct and indirect. But as I have said, the countries are in different stages of their implementation uh, status. This is the map of all the countries that belong to Pulsar. We follow the IPSAS board methodology. And as you can see, there are four countries, or 29 of the state members of Pulsar are using the accounting accrual-based systems. 57% still the majority are still using the partial accrual basis, and only two countries, or 14%, are using still the F cash flow basis. In terms of implementation, we were able to classify the countries 
in those that are just starting the reforms and others that are in a more developed status. Almost 30% of the countries, uh, including Azerbaijan, Georgia, Kosovo, and Sperska Republic, are using the direct implementation uh, of the NICSP, and the 43% were using indirect method. Two countries are just in the planning stage, and only one country is still not having any concrete plans to implement the NICSP reform. The main challenges that we identified are classified according to the method that they use for measuring the implementation. When they use the direct implementation measure, and the implementation and the new accounting system can be easier because they are practically adopting the norms of NICSP as per se. But the challenges are present later on when they implement the new standards. On the contrary, if you use the indirect implementation method, uh, through the issuing of a national standards body, the challenges related to the development of the national standards in the beginning are very important. However, uh, while the uh, reform is later on implemented, it becomes easier. In both cases, the new uh, standard framework require a solid legal framework. In some cases, this legal framework needs to develop since the beginning, and some other countries, including Mexico, have developed a national law of go uh, government accounting systems. And in other countries, the legal frameworks, they uh, need to be updated. Among the main challenges, maybe and many of the focal countries can be familiarized with those challenges. They are very similar among many regions and globally. And the need of strengthening the institutions and giving training, the need of providing technical assistance, the lack of effective mechanism uh, for the reform of projects, resilience to change, the lack of correct IT infrastructure and to implement integrated financial systems, the high cost of, for implementing this, the discrepancy between the NICSP and the legislative and local standards framework and the limited availability of financial information that can be reliable in order to consolidate financial statements. Some of the lessons learned and recommendations. Some of them are the assurance of keeping the political support of the main stakeholders during the beginning and the implementation of reforms, the development and approval of the strategy of implementation of the reforms, and the critical feasible roadmap. We know that in practice, the reforms will not be implemented in two or three years. We have to be more realistic because reforms will take more than five years and even as up to 10 years. To set up a coordination and management frameworks to implement reforms, to make sure that there are human resources, material and financial resources needed, and to check the legal and the normative frameworks, define the new structure of the new accounting system, either centralized or decentralized centralized, as well as to put the role uh, of the entity that will issue the accounting matters, identify and establish the management of risks and the mitigation mechanisms, develop and implement strategies for the change management and institutional capacity in strengthening, evaluate the integration of different public financial systems, and evaluate the need to modernize the integrated uh, financial existing system or even to develop one new one and establish the monitoring mechanism and evaluation of the results of the reforms to timely detect neck, uh, bottlenecks and go ahead with the implementation of the reform. 
The next steps in terms of the reform implementation among the Pulsar countries depend on the situation, on the implementation, actual status in each one of the countries, the use of the pulse evaluation methodology that I will talk about later on that will allow to identify the real status of the normative and practical <coughs> implementation and the areas of opportunity and the best way to face the challenges and solve all the challenges. Uh, we can uh, do it by developing the following four uh, groups of capacities. The capacities uh, in the realm of politics, institutional, technical, and human capacities develop and keep up these four groups of capacities in order to have solid bases, not only for the continuation of reforms, but also to measure the progress and measure the time throughout the time. And the objectives of the evaluation pulse methodology. And before going deeply into this matter, I want to thank the support of Andres and all the team of the Zurich University for all the support to Pulsar program, not only for the publication of the book that I have just mentioned, but on the implementation of the pulse evaluation methodology. The main objectives of the methodology is to support the national and subnational countries in the development of accounting government systems that can be efficient and effective, as well as to help public entities to develop uh, systems and, and the measurement of uh, local accounting government environments and uh, close the gaps among the national and international uh, um, frameworks and the NICSP. And some of the main characteristics of the Pulse tools. Well, it's a global common good, and it is free, and it is online. It's a tool developed for national and subnational governments, but it can also be used by any other public entity, including international bodies, central banks, and uh, government-owned companies. It allows to compile the information on systems, norms, and good government accounting practices, and allows to report in real time the accounting standards based on accrual. And it allows to identify gaps among the national and international accounting frameworks, as well as to have the measurement of the real compliance with NICSP. Here we have a, another set of characteristics or, assets to, or elements to develop the strategy of the integral reform, critical routes for government, which is just barely being planned. We're planning the amendments, all these reforms, and I want to transmit the assessment of the evaluation and the method for strengthening the systems uh, of control. Now, there's a methodology of our assessment, which is based on the methodology of performance in public finances called PEFA, P-E-F-A. Obviously, this method considers all the set of NICSSP, all those norms that have been drafted till the present. It reviews the status of implementation of the reforms to have accounting control for government. The results quality of the assessment and the final report are ensured through the mechanism of control of our quality in different levels. We include the assessment of independent uh, and external agencies and post check, which is similar. Post check is similar to the PEFA check. I'll briefly explain the structure of Pulse as a tool. It has six pillars, 29 indicators, 102 dimensions in total. The indicators and the pillars two, three, and four, and five have a double dimension of assessment that's conceptual and practical assessment. Pillar one and six are only 
focused on the conceptual assessment of things. The evaluation process branches out into four steps, 10 steps or four stages, similar to the PEFA assessment. With PEFA, the assessment of the whole process will last six months. Thank you so much. I'm here to serve you all in case you have doubts or questions, comments, I'm here for you. I'm very, uh, I'm very thankful, Dimitri. We have heard the previous two presentations clearly. In in this world, we know that in general terms, we're part of a process. We're adopting the international norms to have control in government accounting based on what's accrued. And we see, we've seen the trends. We've clearly received the data of trends. We've been trying to adopt. And um, now with the cloud base, we thank Dimitri for his presentation and we could face the challenges as countries who are part of Pulsar. You know, there's similarities in Latin American countries when we speak of its challenges. We know that Pulse as a tool is a tool that's very interesting. I will remind you that we have the information detailed. Contact uh, the people who use the tool. Use it yourselves. All the focal members can have uh, more data in the presentations and use a methodology in the tool. It's really interesting for us to use it because it helps us phase the adoption process of NICS SP. Now I'm going to ask a question, Ross. And this question is for both Dimitri and Ross. Uh, Ross, how do you assess things? There was a slide in which you presented the information in colors. You measured the progress of adoption of or the implementation of NixSP. You adjusted that partially or adopted the the norms partially or their specific level with the uh, different regimes. So you have to assess the development process, the implementation process. You measure the accrued and the balance. So there's an assessment with th that countries have to exercise to measure the progress of the implemented norms, as I've said. Dimitri, based on your experience, you're, based on your experience in Latin America and Focal, I know you have a lot of experience also with Pulsar. So you shared a slide in which you presented the challenges. And there's uh, specificities or differences in all the Pulsar members in the countries. You see that there's different challenges when we're trying to adopt the norms or next SP. And Ross, could you please answer this question? Thank you. Thank you very much for the first question on how the survey uh, generated our data. They self-assess, and we can see, and here, in what's partial, you see in the segment of what was accrued, we see the reports there, specifically. We see the accrued report, and that's based on specific accounts that we need to verify at all levels. And after the assessment, we know that there is a set of accounts based on what's accrued. What does this mean? We have to think about the Pulsar methodology that Dimitri explained. This uh, methodology is implemented, and we continue the adoption process between the types of cash and the accrued. The main challenges that we've identified in the Pulsar countries, and the similar, there's similar challenges in all of these Latin American economies and the Caribbean economies. I'd say that the main difference and I didn't include that in the slide I showed you. It's the cultural challenge as an element. It's very different to work here in this region with all of you. It's, and um, 
let's say, uh, what's traditional or culturally acceptable in Europe and East Central Europe. I mean, they treat matters differently, but the way in which we work with things out leads us to think about tradition in the Soviet Union. Uh, certain countries have hierarchy and sort out, they sort out the information. It's all ordered and we're facing resistance. There might be some fears amidst change, but we think about what's explicitly permitted and what's not permitted. The treasury departments or the analysts and the members in Pulsar are very rigid in some countries. And I won't mention the names of the of the countries. It's they're like the financial KGB. It's like the financial police, and that is seen at a global scale. There are some models that are different, you know, different in contrast with what the methods that we have in Latin America. So we do have some fear about creating something that could, that could be audited, uh, in which we can uh, point fingers at and and point out responsibilities or so we have to be have some precautionary measures when we're adopting this to make sure that there's no mm, poor interpretations or remarks after an audit that would be difficult to to correct after being questioned now thank you so much i have another question if you have questions via slido please send them I have a question. Si, nos re, si vamos a ver el índice inicial cuando se publicó, hubo ni, there were different levels of partial accrue. And during that discussion, we had in IFAC, we decided to create that index for 2021. And what worried these agencies was to see the progress in the types of uh, studies that that analyze the accrued or the partial um, data. Now, if we have to analyze the accrued, we have to analyze what's partial in the accrued. And then we had to subtract or unbundle the subtypes of the different categories with the accrued to understand the index that we created for 2021, which is explained in the slide in the four squares. We have the partial, the cash, the accrued, and the countries have to face that transition and just deal with their accounting to have the real accrued. Well, right now I have more questions, Dimitri. What's the level or percentage of progress in the phase of implementation of Next SP of these norms in all the countries that are part of Pulsar Network? Now, what's, what type of difficulties have these economies of Pulsar faced when implementing Next SPs? Are they similar? The challenges are similar in comparison with the Latin American challenges? That's the question. So, Obviously, the percentage of progress will depend on the activities of a country. There's variance on that development. I can't give you the specific number until we implement the post methodology. Maybe in the next Lima Focal Forum, I'll explain and share specific solid or objective data. Now, when we speak of the difference in the progress of NICS implementation or the NICS SP implementation, I've already explained my comments. The challenges are basically the same. Maybe there's other challenges which are language. Language is a challenge in Latin America. In Latin America, we have an advantage. We speak Spanish, we speak some Portuguese and French, in Latin America mostly, but if you go to the Central European region, there in the ex-Soviet countries, many, many in the population speak Russian, but 
but there's a challenge. We need to translate the next SP to Russian, and there's a translation that dates back to 2010. So they've translated half of the next SP. So in that time frame, back then in that history, so each economy goes through the effort of translating the, the norms and to the local languages. I mean, I could we could mention other Balkan region countries that have their own language and think about uh, Ukraine, Belarus, Georgia, Tajikistan, Kazakhstan, all of these uh, countries that constituted the ex-Soviet Union lead us to speak about the maturity levels of this progress. Some countries still speak only Russian uh, and the official language of some other countries is different for the when in the legislative branch has to translate uh, the norms, the NICS, NICS SP, they have to translate it to their national language, not just to Russian. So it complicates the understanding of the international legislative uh, frame, and obviously it affects the implementation of the norms. Well, thank you so much. Now, unfortunately, we've run out of time. We're we're about to reach the end of this uh, panel, so I'd like to learn more about the the IPSSP uh, experience, the World Bank's participation, and the process of implementing and adapting and adjusting and using these accounting regulations. We've had the privilege of having that proximity with IPSSB, and it's very important for us to see that you were part you're part of this event. Thank you for sharing your presentation and sharing best practices. Thank you for the, your full support. Thank you for supporting FOCAL. We thank international agencies. We had the participation of the World Bank, the Monetary Fund, and other institutions. They're always supporting us. That's very important for us. Uh, so this panel has ended. We're going to enjoy now a break for lunch. We're going to enjoy Mexican food, a great lunch for all of you and we're gonna resume after it thank you so much <laughs>